أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا سيد الأنا وصفوة الأنبياء الكرام المحمود الأحمد أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد <تصفيق> وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما الكهف الحصين الحجة ابن الحسن فداه أرواح العالمين واللعن الدائم على أعدائهم أعداء الدين أبد الآبدين اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلة قال الله العظيم في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما أرسلنا قبلك من المرسلين إلا إنهم ليأكلون الطعام ويمشون في الأسواق وجعلنا بعضكم لبعض فتنة أتصبرون وكان ربك بصيرا. To hasten the reappearance of our beloved Imam Al Imam Al Mahdi, please recite a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. After our Prophet passed away, he left a very divided nation. Of course, it is obvious and something that we can actually understand, and it is very rational, that to say, not all prophets can elevate all nations and put them in the same level. Just look at the history of Prophet Moses. I'm talking about Quran, the chapter, Surah Al-Baqarah. How actually after Prophet Moses guided them, rescued them, يذبحون أبناءكم ويستحيون نساءكم وإذا أنجيناكم من آل فرعون يسومونكم سوء العذاب يذبحون أبناءكم ويستحيون نساءكم وفي ذلك بلاء من ربكم عظيم We rescued you through who? Through Prophet Moses. They used to kill your sons and leave 
their mothers to live. You know, if you kill a baby of a mother and you let her live, it's like you're killing her every day 100 times. يستحي. يذبحون أبناءكم ويستحيون نساءكم. Allah rescued them from Pharaoh and his oppressions and everything, okay? And then when they saw some idols, people worshipping idols, they told Musa, اجعل لنا إلها كما لهم آلهة. We want an idol as well. Seriously. Are you joking? I believe that Prophet Moses got surprised because after all you've been through that we rescued you. Yes. This is in Quran. If we say something from Hadith, they say, no, no. From history, it's a, they say, it's your history. No, but this is Quran. And also, they actually, when a Prophet Musa left them, although Harun actually represented Musa in the era of Musa's absence, yet we see they worshipped an idol, the calf of Samari. They did that. And then when Musa came back to see his nation, most of them prostrating toward an idol, he told Prophet Harun, what did you do? What I'm seeing it's awful. I can't bear that. But they did. And it's been mentioned in the Quran. And our Prophet said that as well. That what will happen to my nation it will be very similar to what happened to Israelite. So don't be surprised when we say that even some great companion of the Prophet they actually astrayed from the right path because it's been mentioned in the Quran. Just go and recite Surah at Tawbah. I'm pretty sure that you recited Surah at Tawbah. Just try to have some reflection in this great chapter of Quran to see the most verses of that chapter. Most verses of that chapter are talking about hypocrites and not infidels. Be careful. If we want to punish them in dunya, we can. If we want to uncover their faces, we can. If we want to descend our wrath upon them, we can. And actually, if you want to consider only one party as your actual enemy, you have to consider them as your actual enemy. They are the enemy. From the within, if you have an enemy outside the city, yes, you can. Protect your city. But if you have the disease amongst the nation, what you can do? So yes, when the prophet passed away, they actually hijacked, I can say, the successorship of the commander of the faithful, Ali ibn Abi Talib, salamullahi alayhi. They sat in Saqifat Bani Sa'ada, the shed, the the Shed of Bani Sa'ada, and now I'm not sure if you can, if you've seen this video. Someone just uh, actually sent me a video from Medina. Uh, the place, Saqif at Bani Sa'ada, it's a garden now. So they demolished everything, even houses of Ahlul Bayt, salam, but they left Saqif at Bani Sa'ada as a garden. Why? Because it's the beating heart of that system. Subhanallah. And they went and they sat and happened what happened. I'm not here to talk about that. However, later when they saw Lady Fatima and Imam Ali alayhi salam, they told them, okay, you are now telling us why we have appointed this person, the first Khalifa, to, to 
rule us? Where were you when we were deciding? Imam Ali replied, do you expect us to leave the body of our prophet on the ground and come and join your evil meetings? Not going to do so. I had few missions that the prophet told me to do. The first thing, to bury the holy body of the prophet. And the second thing, to gather the Quran and verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want it, I can give it to you. If you don't, that's it. Go. I'm not going to give it to you. Of course, the Quran and its explanations and its tafsir. So here, we all heard that, that Imam Ali salam, used patience. What do we mean by that? And you know, this patient that Imam Ali salam, patience that Imam Ali salam, used was very valuable. It wasn't an easy task. When Lady Fatima alayhi salam, came back from the mosque and saw Ali ibn Abi Talib sitting in the corner of the house, she cried, not for herself. She cried for Imam Ali alayhi salam, Ya Ali! قطعت قادمة الأجذل فخان كريش الأعذل You were in a position that you used to ask people to come and fight you. You used to hunt actually eagles and now a crow is coming and trying to actually fight back with his broken wings. And then Imam Ali stood up, he grabbed his sword and told Lady Fatima that you can trust me. I will go and take whatever you want me to take off them. However, if you use patience, it's better for you. She said, okay. I will be patient. So, what was Imam Ali alayhi salam saying to Lady Fatima salamullahi alayha? He was actually telling her that I can go and use miracle if you want. You are the daughter of the Prophet. If you ask me, I will do so. What the Prophet asked Imam Ali alayhi salam to avoid to you. Use miracle. That's it. Don't use miracle. Be patient. وَجَعَلْنَا بَعْضَكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ فِتْنَةً أَتَصْبِرُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trialing some of you by others. Would you be patient? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended this verse upon the Prophet, he came to Imam Ali alayhi salam. And Lady Fatima and Imam Hassan Imam Hussain closed the door and he started to talk to them that this is Jibra'il and he's talking to me. Are you willing to use patience? They say yes. And the Prophet started to cry. Started to cry and weep because he knew what will happen. He knew that will crush the house of Lady Fatima. All sect actually narrate that. Not one sect. Shia and Sunni not narrating all sect. Why Lady Fatima was very unhappy, was angry with those who crushed her house, burned her house, because they did too many bad things. They killed her baby. They actually broke her bones, her ribs. And that's why she told them that I won't forgive you. And subhanallah, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani and some others such as Suyuti and some other scholars of Sunni narrate that when the first Khalifa was in his last moment of his life, he said, I've done three things. I wish that I wasn't in a position to do that. The first thing, laytani lam ufattish bayta fatima. I wish 
I wouldn't order my soldiers actually to enter that house of Lady Fatima. So let's move. And let me tell you. After they did what they did, they appointed the first person, the first Khalifa to represent Islam, so called. They appointed Abu Bakr to be the Khalifa of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. Amir al Mu'min and Ibn Abbas had a meeting. And Abu Sufyan joined that meeting. This is important. And Abu Sufyan told Imam Ali alayhi salam, I'm willing to fill the desert with soldiers if you want. I'm willing to do so. As much as you can, you, I, as much as you want and need, I can bring people for you. I've got my soldiers. They work under covers, but they are soldiers. They work for me. They accept my words under one condition, that you be the Khalifa and I pay allegiance to you. Imam Ali السلام, looked at Abu Sufyan. Imam Ali knew Abu Sufyan. He knew him very well. And then he stood up and said, Ayyuhannas. Apparently, there were more people there as well. From Hashemite, probably. Ayyuhannas. Shukku amwaj al fitan bisufun in najat. Ride waves of fitna by using arcs of salvations. And then he said, Rahimallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as mercy covers those who know what they have to do and what they have to avoid. Aflaha man nahada bi najah aw istaslama farah. Do you think that you can succeed in your mission? Go ahead. If you don't, just sit back and rest and use patience. And I'm telling you that what you are offering me is not something that I will accept. Just put that in your mind. Abu Sufyan is willing to give what? His soldiers to Imam Ali alayhi salam. Expecting what in return? Of course he expects Imam Ali to give him whatever he wants. So he wanted Imam Ali to rule under his conditions. As Talha and Zubair did the same thing. Somebody might come and say, okay, Abu Sufyan offered the help to Imam Ali alayhi salam. Why Imam Ali rejected the help? Because he knew. So why he accepted the allegiance of Talha and Zubair? Because they were not, they were not alone. The whole nation came to the door of Ali ibn Abi Talib and asked Imam Ali السلام, to be their ruler. And that's different. He had no choice. If it wasn't for people that they came to my house and asked me to be the governor I would have rejected this government. I don't need it. I don't want it. They took it. I'm not going to take it back. They took it when it was alive and healthy. And now they are giving it back to me while it's injured and wounded. I don't need it. That was different. And we see what Talha and Zubair did. And we'll talk about that inshallah later. So we can learn from Muhammad Ali salam, that he was willing salamullahi alayhi to sacrifice for Islam to use patience for Islam 
And then the nice thing, Amir Mu'min alayhi salam says, in askut yaqulu jaza'a min al maut. If I stay silent, they say, okay, Ali ibn Abi Talib is fearing of death. That's why he doesn't want to actually enter this battle, this field, this war. He's fearing. And then Imam Ali alayhi salam said, hey heart, بعد اللتيا والتي after what they saw of me in Khaybar and Hunayn and Badr and Uhud after all of that they're now accusing me of being coward accusing me of that of not being brave بعد اللتيا والتي I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I enjoy the death more then a baby enjoying her, his mom's breast, when she breastfeed him. Wallah, Labnu Abi Talib, Anas bil maut, min al tifl bithadiyya yummah. And then Imam Ali said, Walaqad indamajtu ala maknoon ilmin. I have such a knowledge. That if I tell you that knowledge, you will get confused. Zubair will fight against me. No one will accept that. Once the Prophet وسلم, was sitting with Imam Ali السلام, and Zubair. And he looked at Zubair and told Zubair, do you like this man? He said, of course. He's my cousin. He's Amir al muminin The Prophet told him, but you will fight against him. Zubair said, me? You're joking. وَلَقَدْ اندَمَجْتُ عَلَى مَكْنُونِ عِلْمٍ لَوْ بُحْتُ بِهِ لَاضْطَرَبْتُمْ اضْطَرَابَ الْأَرْشِيَةِ فِي الطُّوَلِ بعيدة. If I even tell you a little bit about what I know, you will get so confused, so amazed that you can't handle it at all. Was correct, Salamullah alayhi. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam was asked why Imam Ali did not revolt against those enemies of Islam. Imam Sadiq said, Liayatan fi kitabullah. Or one verse in Quran. Which verse? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Fatih, Walaw tazayyalu la'adhibna al-ladina kafaru minhum khasa. If they get differentiated, we would actually descend our wrath upon those who do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Imam Sadiq said, وَدَائِعَ مُؤْمِنِينَ فِي أَصْلَابِ قَوْمٍ كَافِرِينَ Imam Ali was waiting for Muhammad, the one who said, Muhammadun ibni min sulbi fulan. was waiting for him. Imam Ali alayhi salam said, لَتُغَرْبَلُنَّ غَرْبَلَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will trial you and you will see with Almighty God's ordeals and trials some of you who used to be very good people close to the Prophet they will fail this test and some others who used to be bad people will pass this new test just put that in your mind so Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam told Hashemite, such as Ibn Abbas and the rest, and told the enemy that you cannot use me as a bridge to reach your goals. O oh, Abu Sufyan, we still consider you as the enemy of Islam. You can't fool Ali ibn Abi Talib, salamullahi alayhi. So why he rejected Abu Sufyan's help? Because he knew. And then Abu Sufyan went and visited the first Khalifa. First Khalifa told him, what do you want? Do you want to pay allegiance to me? He replied, it depends. <laughs> he said, depends on what? He said, are you willing to pay? He said, of course. How much do you want? He said, this much. He said, yes, I'm willing. Give me your hand. Not only I will pay allegiance to you, I will kiss it as well. So Amir al was looking for soldiers 
not people who actually pretend to be his followers. That's why he said, if I can get 40 soldiers, I will fight back without any hesitations. So people gathered around Imam Ali's house, too many of them. And he told them, okay, do you want to come and fight? Just go and sleep tonight and come back tomorrow with shaved heads. Shaved heads? Yes. Anything other than that? Nothing. Only four people attended. Salman, Abu Dhar, Naqdad, and Ammar. And Amir Mu'min shaved his head as well. They went back. Their missus told them, why do you want to shave your head? Imam Ali told me, no, don't shave your head. You will be recognized. So what should I do? Just sleep now. We'll see tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow. Just arrived. Should I go now? Imam Ali told me to shave my head. So how can I go without shaving my head? So they stood in the house next to the ladies. Be women as them. Imam Ali told and shouted on some people, Ya Ashbah Rijal. Wala Rijal. You are male, not man. Ya Ashbah Rijal. Wala Rijal. So, وَجَعَلْنَا بَعْضَكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ فِتْنَةً أَتَصْبِرُونَ Imam Ali used patience against the enemy and he protected Islam. Did not listen to the offer of Abu Sufyan to protect Islam. He rejected that. It's a lot. It shows us that Ibn Abi Talib doesn't want to rule. Doesn't want to be the governor. He's a sacred man. He's man of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He represents Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wasn't looking for the government to enter an agreement with enemy of the Prophet, with the enemy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at all. At all. And that's why they killed him. Lady Fatima said, وَمَا نَقَمُوا مِنْ أَبِ الْحَسَنِ why they hate Ali ibn Abi Talib? نَقَمُوا مِنْهُ وَاللَّهِ نَكِيرَ سَيْفِهِ Because Ali ibn Abi Talib has got a personality that he cannot manipulate. That's Ali ibn Abi Talib. Peace be upon him. Just let's go to the house of Ali. Salam Allah alayhi. And this night, when he's laying down in his bed, in his bed, and he's actually, and he's actually lifting one lifting foot, foot, and resting other, resting other from the pain, from the pain. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Imam Al Hussein was sitting, Imam Hussein was sitting next to his head, next to his head, and he was and he putting was his head on his lap. His when Imam Ali alayhi salam opened his eye, opened his eye. When he looked at he looked Imam Al Hussein's eyes, eyes, he fainted out again. Fainted out again. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. After a few moments, a few moments Amir al Mu'minin opened his eye, opened his eye to see that his head, that his head is on the lap of Imam al Hussein. He looked at Imam al Hussein's eyes and he fainted out again. Allahu Akbar, a great scholar, used to explain this actually matter by saying probably when Imam Ali looked at Imam Al Hussein's eyes and how his head is on the lap of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam he remembered Karbala and what will happen in Karbala that's why he fainted out but which occasion of Karbala which tragedy of Karbala Ali ibn Abi Talib remembered on that moment probably when Imam Al Hussein walked towards his son Ali al Akbar the most similar one to the Prophet in his face but the most similar one 
to his grandfather Ali ibn Abi Talib in his martyrdom and death and he sat next to Ali ibn al-Akbar and he put the head of Ali ibn al-Akbar the broken head of Ali ibn al-Akbar on his lap as Imam al-Hussein put the broken head of Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen on his lap yes Amir al-Mu'mineen remembered that moment when he saw the eyes of Imam al Hussein crying, he remembered that tragedy when Imam al Hussein is alone with Ali ibn al Akbar, putting his face upon the face of Ali ibn al Akbar. Waladi Ali ala dunya ya ba'dak al قعد عنده وشاف مغمض العين سابح بدمه مترى بالغد He sat next to Ali in the lake and started to call him with no response He saw the broken head of Ali in the lake and the bloody face of him with wires al tabur al ras nasir yes probably Imam al Hussein in that moment remembered his father Ali ibn Abi Talib when his head was on his lap رحم الله من ناتا وعليا أيوا مظلوم أيوا شهيدا لكنما المرجع لله إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منقلب ينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين إلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات رحم الله من قرأ الفاتحة مع الصلوات